Hey everyone, Professor Hank here, and today we're going to talk about how you can do random access with your files in C++. So what do we mean when we talk about random access? What we mean is we're able to move the file pointer around um, throughout the file so that you don't have to start from the very beginning of a file in order to read from it, right? You can fast forward to say the middle of the file and then start reading from there. To do this, we're going to need to look at four functions, seek G, seek P, put G, put P, and then in addition, we're going to look at tell G and tell P. So let's go ahead and get started here. So, you know, it'll be helpful to think of this as we're going through it as a file being basically a giant array, right? So you can think of, you know, you understand that C strings are arrays filled with characters with an old terminator at the end. Files are like giant arrays filled with bytes with an end of file byte at the end. So if you keep that in mind, then moving around within the file is a bit easier, I think, right? Because you can say, oh, well, I want to go to the 10th byte, which is really kind of like element nine in our array uh, analogy here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's keep that in mind. Let's give it a try. So let's write a program that is going to create a text file. And we're going to need OFStream to do that. And we'll open it. Uh, and we'll name our file, you know, maybe output.txt. Output.txt. And so we'll remember to close our file. And we're just going to write something simple like how now brown cow. All right, so we'll do that. And let's go ahead and run our program. Now, normally you want to do error testing and all those sorts of things. But um, to speed things up, you know, we'll, we'll leave it out for now, right? So if we open up the file, you can see that we have in our text file, how now round cow. Now, if you want to read from that file, right, then you could do IF stream and open it for reading. And then you could use, let's make sure we close it. Then you could use a string variable and you could use get line to read it in to that string variable, right? So you could do something like get line, then into buff, and then we could see out, we could see out buff, right? So then if we file and run that, then you're gonna see that we've got how now brown cow, right? Because we made it and we read from it and we put it on the screen. Now, what if I didn't want to display the entire contents of the file? What if I only wanted to display one character? Let's say that I wanted to display just the N, right? Well, what I could do is I could use this function called seek G, all right? So the seek G is seek get. So that allows us to fast forward our file pointer. In the file pointer, when you open a file for reading, it automatically gets set at the beginning of the file. When you open a file for writing um, in normal mode, then it gets set at the beginning of the file. If you open a file for writing in append mode, then it goes to the very end, right? But we can move that thing around. And so we don't have to start our reading from the very first byte. We can move forward and that's what seek G allows us to do. So we've got three options here, right? So we've got iOS beginning, iOS end, and iOS cur. So you have to specify two things when you're fast forwarding, when you're moving around within a file. How many bytes you're gonna move in from where, all right? So the first argument is how many bytes in you wanna go. So if we think of this as kind of like an array, as, as we were talking about before, then H would be the zeroth byte, O would be this one, W2, space three, and then N4. So what I can do is I can say, well, let's move four bytes from the beginning, okay? And then if I do that, I can use the get function to read just that character. So let's create a temporary character uh, variable here, and then we'll do fin.get and then we'll read it into the temporary character variable C, and then we'll see out the C. And so now you'll see that we actually only got just the N. I read one character. So let's go ahead and do a second example. Let's say that we wanted to print out the C right here. Okay, now we could do a similar thing like we did in our first example with seek G going from the beginning of the file, but we can also go from the end of the file, right? So we go from the end and we can count backwards. Now remember that files are kind of like C strings in a way in that, you know, a C strings got all of its characters and then it has an old terminator at the end. Well, with files, it's got all the bytes and then the end of file character at the end. So that one counts too. So if we were to start going backwards, right, then the end of file character could be like our zero. And then the question mark would be negative one, the W would be negative two, the O would be negative three, and then the C would be negative four. So then we could say something like um, fin.seekg negative four iOS end. All right, so then once we've gone back there, then we'll do um, our read 
and then we'll print out our C. And let's go ahead and move the character from, or move the cursor to the next line from our previous example. And then let's see what that looks like. Right, so then you can see, then we have the C. The other option you have, the third option you have, would be to um, go from the current position. So after that last read, right, we read the C, okay, and then that causes the file pointer to advance to the O right there, right? So I could, let's say I wanted to print out the, the question mark, right? So what I could do is I could say, all right, well, let's move forward, right? If we're if we're already at the O, then relative to the current position of the pointer, that's kind of like our zeroth element. And so then the W would be one, and then the question mark would be two. So we'll move forward two from our current position, and then we'll do our read, and then we'll print out our um, value that we read. All right, so then you can see there's the question mark. So you can move all over the place. Now let's uh, do one more example, all right? So let's go ahead and do a read and let us say that I wanted to print out the string just now brown cow to the end, right? I, I wanted to skip over all of this stuff here. Well, all I have to do is fast forward my read pointer to the end, right? To the file pointer to the end. So I'm going to do another seek G, but I'm going to go to the end. And then once I'm there, I'll do a get line. So where's that at? If H is zero, O is one, W is two, space is three, and then N is four, right? So we'll do four. And then we're doing that from the beginning of the file. And then we'll do our get line from um, the file into our buffer string variable. And then we'll see out our buffer variable, right? So then you'll see that we only printed out what was left in the file, right? We fast forward it. We didn't have to process the entire file. Okay, so now let's see how we can use seek P to help us in the put function to help us to write to a file, okay? So we'll pick a position within a file and then we will write to that position. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll actually open a file for reading and writing at the same time. So once we've created our file, then we'll open our file again, output.txt, and this time we'll open it for reading and writing at the same time. So in this way, we're gonna gain access to seek G and seek P at the same time. We'll preserve the contents of the file that we created right here. And then we'll be able to move forward and backwards and throughout the file and either extract data or overwrite it. So let us say, let's do an example of that by using the um, seek p function and using put so what we'll do is let's say that we wanted to you know replace all of the characters in here all the words let's say we wanted to capitalize them in the file right so if we were going to do that then what we could do is we could use the random access we don't have to just rewrite the entire file since we've opened it for both reading and writing then we have access to that put pointer so i can fast forward and I can do something like this. I can say, all right, well, f dot seek p, and I have to go so many bytes, I'm gonna go from the beginning of the file, that's gonna be my offset. And so where's the n, right? Remember h was zero, o was one, w was two, space was three, and n was four. So we're gonna move four bytes forward. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do f dot put, and we'll do an uppercase n. And then from there, we need to move to the b. So for this one, we'll seek, from our current position, okay, and so how many bytes are we going to need to do that? Well, to do that, if we're at n, right, then that's zero, and then one, two, three, four. So we need to move four forward again, and then we'll do our put again, and this time it's going to be uppercase B, and then we need to go to the C, so we'll do seek G again, and here we'll do, you know, just to show every single thing, every example here, we'll go ahead and we'll do from the end. So from the end. So we've got zero for the end of line um, character, and then one for the question mark, two for the W, uh, three for the O, and then C for, or four for the C. So that's gonna be negative four. And then we will do our put, and it'll be an uppercase C. Now, once that's done, we can rewind to the very beginning of the file, and then grab the whole line, and then um, we can rewind to the beginning of the file, do a read using get line, and then display the contents of the file. So since we're gonna be doing a read, let's do seek G, and this should be seek P, right? Because we're still doing put, we're still doing a write. So we'll do seek G, we'll make sure that that's at the beginning, and then from there, we'll do our get line from F into buff, and then we'll see out buff, okay? And let's make sure that we have a string variable named buff. That would be useful. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. 
right? So you can see it says, how now the bound cow? So I was off by one on my counting, right? So let's go back and take a look. Uh, let's see here. So, oh, that's because when we did our put, that advanced the breed pointer by one. Okay, so we did that right operation, right? So this actually should have been three here. So let's fix that and test it. So you can see we made all of the changes and we're able to view all of those changes by only opening the file one time, right? So we were able to open it, fast forward, doing our writes all along the way, rewind, and then grab the whole line and then print it out on the screen, right? So one more example, you can do this with binary files as well. So let's create, we'll do a, a, a file of record. So let's create a record here and we'll just store in it um, an integer and a double. And um, we'll go ahead and initialize an array of those things. Okay, so what I'll do is I will create the file. So we'll say um, fstream f records.dat, and we'll do this for writing in binary mode. And then we will write that array to the file, reinterpret cast here star, and then we're gonna write our array of records. And how many elements are there in that array? There are three. So we could do three times size of record here. Of course, since it's a local array, we could also, we could have just done this. We could just have done size of um, records. That would have worked as well. All right, so we do our write, and then we'll do our close. Now, let us say that I want to retrieve the second element of this array, right? So what I could do is, is I could open the file for reading. So we'll do f.open, and we'll say, um, records.dat, we're gonna be reading from it, and it is a binary file. Okay, now I only want one record, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to fast forward one element. So, make sure that we close our file. So what I'll do is I'll say f.seekg, forget for reading, p is for put, g is for get. You put something into a file, you get something out of a file. So we'll go from the beginning of the file and we have to go a certain number of bytes. Well, how many bytes? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of use this little cheat thing here so I don't have to do the math in my head. I'm gonna say, well, I wanna move so many records forward. I wanna move the size of a record forward, right? Remember this first element would be the zeroth element. Now this is gonna be the one element. So I'm gonna move forward one times the size of a record. And then once I've done that, then I can read my record into a temporary record here. So I can just do a read. So I'll do uh, f.read and I'm going to read into the memory location of my record, of my temporary record. And how many bytes am I gonna read? Well, I'm going to read the size of a record. And then once I've done that, then I will print out the contents of that temporary record to prove that it worked. Temp, I think I named it what? Uh, let's see here, yeah, int x and d. Okay, so let's try it. So you can see I was able to successfully extract the second record. Now let's um, do a similar thing like we did with how now brown cow, right? So let us say that we wanted to change the second record and then we'll read in the updated array and then print out the contents. So if I was going to do that, if I wanted to change the contents of one of the records, then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to open it for reading and writing, similar to what we did with the text file. And I'm gonna seek, I'm gonna go forward one record and then I'm gonna do a write, okay? So, cause I want to change the contents of this. We'll change it to, I don't know, a four and 4.4. So I'll initialize this new record here with four and 4.4 and then I'll write that record. Okay, so let's fast forward. So we're gonna do f.seek p this time because we're gonna put and um, we're not reading, so let's get rid of that. So we're gonna put the new record in there. So we're gonna go forward um, one times the size of a record from the beginning of the file. And then we're gonna write that record. So f.write, and then we gotta do our casting. Okay, and we have to give it the memory address of where we're getting the data from. And then how big, how much data we're gonna write to the file. So we're gonna write the size of a record to the file. And then I will rewind, move my seek g pointer to the very beginning. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll create a, another record array. We'll call it records in, and then I'll read in the entire array. Dot read, interpret cast, care star into record in, and I'm going to read three times the size of a record, and uh, it's records in. And then from there, I can print out the contents of 
that new array here to prove that it actually worked. All right, so we'll do that. So we'll say for auto r records in, and then we'll just do a little C out here. C out r dot x and r dot d. Okay, so let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so then you can see that we were able to successfully update the record in our binary file. Okay, so for this example, let's go ahead and reopen our output.txt again. So we'll do I have stream then put.txt. And let's say that I wanted to fast forward for reading, oh, um, I don't know, six bytes in from the beginning. All right, now what tell G is gonna do is it's simply going to return the position of that pointer, right? So I can do something like this. I can say fin.tell G. And then I could store that in an integer, right? Or I could just simply send it to see output. Now, either way, it's just an integer. And that will simply report the current position of that pointer. Right? So that you can see we went six bytes in. Now, a clever little trick with this is that if you wanted to be able to tell how big um, a file is, well, then what you could do is you could move the pointer zero bytes from the end of the file, and then you could ask the pointer where it's at, right? So you could say, um, you know, fin dot tell G, and then that would tell you the size of the file because it would be at the very end of the file at that point. And so you can see that, you know, this file is 18 bytes and tell P works the exact same way. It's just that tell P is used when you've opened a file for um, writing. So now you know how to do random access on files in C++.